Well, hello and welcome. Um, I am so excited to be talking today to two of the Ronald K. Brown Evidence of Dance Company members. Um, I am Erin Kelly. I am the art director and communications manager at the Mondavi Center. And I'm here with uh, Arcel Kabwag. I think I said that, Kabwag. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. And Arcel, you are the um, you're the associate artistic director for Ronald K. Brown Evidence. And Joycey Edwards, you are the assistant rehearsal director, and you are both longtime dancers with Ronald K. Brown. Thank you so much for meeting with us today. So I wanted to mention that before we start, just go through the pieces that you'll be bringing um, to Mondavi yeah. Center pretty soon here in next month. So you're going to start with Mercy, which is a 2019 piece, which has the music composed by uh, Michelle and Diego Cello, which I cannot wait to see. <laughs> In fact, uh, I was wondering, I thought, you know, had we seen that performance at the Mondavi Center and we haven't. So that'll be a really exciting um, introduction for us. Just that lush, her lush voice and this the richness uh, with your movements will be really fun. And then you're going to follow that piece up with um, what is being called a creation and pro process and progress, a work in progress, the equality of night and day. So excited to uh, see that piece. And we'll talk more about that piece today. And then you're ending it with Upside Down, which is a piece I've seen a, a few times. It's um, an amazing piece, Umo Sangare. It's earthy and warm and, and a piece that you've been dancing for a while. So super excited about this new work, uh, Equality of Night and Day. Can either of you, both of you, talk about how far along are you in this work? And just describe a little bit about what this piece means, what it's doing, what the themes are. Yes, the Equality of Night and Day. Um, it's interesting. This piece started during while we were um, in quarantine. Um, the very first moments um, Ron started creating the piece, we were in a um, bubble at the lumber yard, and that's when Ron started um, um, just playing around with the movement, um, listening to speeches um, by Angela Davis, and then just sharing his ideas with us and just the first parts of um, the movement. And then we had another bubble. Um, at Jacob's Pillow, where Ron really dove right in and started creating, um, putting it together, piecing it together. Um, and the quality of night and day, um, so Ron talked to us about the equinox, where mm -hmm. it's kind of the in-between between night and day, and um, where it's like equal amount of time. And so he kind of opened it up to us mm -hmm. and let us do our own research. Like, what does that mean to us? Or what, is, what do you guys think that is? And, um, you know, during that time, we're also going through, you know, the George Floyd yeah. and, you know, all of that. And so it started to take a different shape and meaning. Um, I always think that Ron's work has always been about civil rights, about um, community, about people taking accountability and responsibility. And... Um, and just kind of awareness too, just sort of your, right? There's sort of your awareness in space with other people as a citizen, as a community exactly. member. And community. And how you engage with each other. Yeah. And I mean, in all three pieces, you'll feel that sense of community, um, especially in Upside Down. But um, in the quality of nine day, there's a moment where, um, there's a couple moments where the dancers are going, walking around in a circle, um, kind of clockwise of the elephant. <laughs> <clears throat> and Ron described this, um, and elephants also do this like when um, an elephant might pass away and then they'll like do this walk around the, um, and there's something, you know, it's just kind of fascinating about how these anim this animal would like have the instincts to do that. And, you know, and also I, the circle, which, I mean, obviously there's a lot of symbolism in the circle, but given that you're dealing with this theme of the equinox and the sun and the moon and the earth and all of these sort of round shapes, it kind of then ties back into that too. And then the quality of sort of protecting one another. And I'd, I'd like to, you, if you wouldn't mind both of you to tell me a little bit more about Ron's 
um, the way that he choreographs his process. It sounds like he came, he comes maybe with a sort of generic theme and then it, it grows from there as you all start adding your own, not just your own individual movements, but your own sort of philosophical places and how you're feeling about the movements and how you're feeling about how it's evolving and growing and tying into your own narratives and personal experience. So equality started with this equinox and then it grew. Is that correct? How did it evolve? What did it change into? Where is it now? I'll let Joyce take this. <laughs> yes, I feel like in true RKB fashion, I have a bunch of notes. Like I think that your question <laughs> prompted like uh, this journey of writing and like this moment of reflection for myself inside of the work. And I was just kind of writing about you know, like I used to think about, oh, the sun and the moon and just like kind of having this equinox symbolize or the moment that the sun is directly above the equator. And so we have an equal day, <laughs> and, yeah. right? But then the shift sort of like, it, it became more real. And I think like, as we went into the studio and we started to really understand Angela Davis, Angela Davis's text, which I will, wait for you all to listen to um, there's like there's a beauty of listening to it for the first time and kind of like glazing over if you will the language that she's using and then watching the bodies and and putting the two pieces of information together for yourself but it's it's called this first glimpse but i think to me in its own right it's complete you know like it's something that you watch you'll you will see a beginning there's an ending and then inside of that there's just like a series of unanswered questions or you get to watch the dancers sort of grappling with the realities of judgment of of how we offer compassion to one another like seeking community finding it like deviating from whatever we call community like who establishes the laws and and the the, the ways that we interact with the space. And so it, it just sort of lands in a present moment for me. It, it becomes less about like, oh, the, the shapes and the sun and the moon yeah. and where the, the earth is and, and more so like, who am I as a person? Like, how can I? Like fundamental, sort of like fundamental questions about just being, about just being a being, right? An organic yeah. being. But what is interesting, you, you get me so excited because I start thinking about all, you know, the kind of the richness of all the layers that go into the, these works. Um, because the other thing is you all are, you come from such sort of layered and rich backgrounds. You're all thinkers and movers and conscious, sort of conscious beings for lack of a better description. And so you're bringing so much of your own personality. Um, so I can't even imagine like at the end of the creation of one of these pieces, how, how many things we can kind of all get from it, you know, on a personal level. But I thought when I saw first glimpse, I all, I sort of imagine like the dawn of the sunrise or the sunset kind of coming up from the horizon line. It's a perfect description of it, but Joycey, your um, sort of unboxing that as a complete piece is almost aligned with sort of that living in the moment and kind of appreciating what it is given where you are in any given moment in time. And, and this, I think the situation, this pandemic situation has kind of caused us all to think of those questions. And it's kind of a leveler in a, in a beautiful way, even though it's been so difficult. In that way, the way you describe, Joycey, the, your take on where equality has, how it's evolved and where it has landed today and what it's doing with, in terms of community. And it's almost as if we get to define equality for ourselves. So you have a voice in your own, in the construction of what you believe is equality. How is equality relevant today? Well, <laughs> I mean, oh these questions are overwhelming. Um, <laughs> There's one thing that we've learned about equality is that it's not equitable, I guess, or it, it doesn't help us achieve equity. And so like, what do you do with that? It's like, we, we are seeking this balance or, or seeking the things that were denied, like basic human rights or the ability to make decisions, or it's like, I've never grown up or lived in my lifetime to experience 
this true balance of like this, this almost sort of fantasy. It's like, okay, this exists in the world. And so how do I make that closer to my reality? Can you both of you identify a piece like moment or a, a series of movements in the piece where you feel like there is equality represented, whether it be in balance or in helping one another, or that's the first part of the question. Second part of the question, when we come to the show, can we identify that moment? What are some of the movements that define equality? Being the, I'm, old, I'm much older now, so I'm not on the stage as much, but being on the other side with Ron and on the creative process, it's interesting to watch the piece and watch it evolve and see like, okay, what does the audience member see when they watch this? And what is it saying? And there's a part in the beginning, the dancers are holding their arms like this and their, their heads are down and they're rocking side to side. And um, the minute that Ron had them do that, um, my, I was thinking like, oh, the, it's the brilliance of Ron's choreography of how just like, because one, he comes, like, well, comes up with the title first and then everything kind of evolves around that. Oh, but it was just, when he, they were doing this part, they're coming from both sides of the stage, coming towards each other. And I was like, even the quality of balancing <laughs> from side to side and finding your center. Um, I thought that was just a beautiful moment, and I think that's something that you'll that you'll see. Um, I think it Sorry. resembles a lot of you know um, one us coming together, but um, just oh, but we have this thing where we look down a lot, almost like as if we're like angels looking down on the earth and looking down on the people, and it kind of just feels like there's this moment of prayer, but mm -hmm. this movement is something that is not in any other piece. And so I was thought it was really beautiful. It's like, oh, just like find an equal balance from side to side. And then from the equality of them coming together, um, facing each other in a group in unison, it's not something that always happens mm -hmm. in the work. And I just thought that that was just a really beautiful moment to like, um, when it when the piece first started, because I was like, okay, here we go. This is like wow. Ron's title kind of like starts to play in our minds and we think about it. And it's like, oh, what are, what does this mean? Because Ron is not always so literal with telling us like, this means this. And then you guys are going to come on and you represent that. He kind of just creates it. And then he'll tell us, oh, my ideas are this. Or he wants you to think of this. Or he'll tell us a story about something in his life so that it can tap into stories that we have in ourselves so that we can be evidence evidence of it is. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the people that we come from um the stories the teachers the family members and that we could represent that on the stage it, it's such a timeless name for your company i mean it was relevant calling it evidence at the beginning and today it feels it feels the same you know it feels as powerful as it did then and maybe more so what role do you as dancers play in the making of the choreography? Well, Ron choreographs every step. <laughs> he definitely <laughs> choreographs every step. Um, I think as an audience member, once we break off into solos, it looks like it, that's, that's choreography being generated from ourselves because I think Ron is really great in tapping in with knowing his dancers mm -hmm. and what, you know, what movement works for them and what movement he wants them to do to kind of challenge themselves so that they step up in their dancing, um, which might be different than which might be different than how they're used to moving. Um, so he's really brilliant in that aspect of creating solos on us personally. And then even you know over the years, there's new dancers that come in that have to fill in these spots, like placing who should do what or whose personality kind of fits in this or who needs to do this part. Um, so he definitely choreographs every moment. I think we just kind of bring ourselves to the work and like again like our experiences um, and just spiritually how we're connected to dance and I think that's what the individuality part I think is from what we do. Ron is quite the observer right so it sounds like he really studies he studies you as people yeah, absolutely. not as not as chorus dancers so to speak which exactly. of course is part of this background that he presents in modern dance and an African tradition where it's really about the individual. When he does the choreography and he sort of allows you to express yourselves, 
does he tweak what you're doing or does he kind of allow you to to wrap yourself around the movement and and find your own avenue is it kind of that kind of collaborative process i think that we really arrive at whatever it is that you see on the stage like through a series of revisions mm -hmm. um i think that at the beginning you know he gives us freedom to to get behind him because he will just generate the movement on the spot so it's just like he wow. will stand before you in the studio and you'll watch him working through maybe it's one part of a sequence over and over and over again and he's revising within himself it's there's like this listening and an and, and attunement that's going on within himself um that we're trying to grasp you know like well what is he going through sometimes we don't have the language right away and he lets us sort of find that and then he will look back at us and say oh okay well I see the approach that you took to that and that helps me bridge this idea to this idea and so now we can like we have a mutual language or an understanding for what the body is supposed to be doing and then Ron's a wonderful guide and so like our, our cell was sharing earlier he will give us stories and or just like you know these anecdotal moments about his life and and it's up to us then to be open and to say like yes I'm willing to dive deeper into this or you know have a journaling practice outside of rehearsal taking the notes so that those changes happen over time and we're not just coming back to do the same steps over and over again that it really becomes about the storytelling of what the movement is rather than like trying to be right in a and, sense. and there's a dialogue that's happening right there's this like interplay between your stories and his stories and then the story that you're making in that moment in creating the piece the collaboration part is is so uh so beautiful and so analogous to this sort of more general theme that i feel i see a lot in in ron's work of community, of society, of responsibility and culture. And the music is a big part of that. I would love for you to, to tell us a little bit about the Angela Davis pieces. And then Jason Moran is doing part of the music. Is that correct? Right? So Jason Moran, uh, the multi-talented jazz pianist uh, has been to Mondavi Center several times he's pretty amazing he's a visual artist too so he's another one this sort of creative polyglot i call y'all because everybody's sort of involved in like all these a lot of different creative endeavors i almost want to see the piece without too much knowledge because you kind of want to be surprised but the power in the speeches connected with that piano playing must be pretty incredible I know, Joyce, you mentioned her speeches, how the interplay of those two work and how the movements and the score kind of work together. And I'm also curious if you hear the score before you see the choreography or if they're happening together or if the, you know, the, the, compo the composition comes and you, Ron gives you little snippets of that and then he shows you the movements. How, how does that collaboration work with the musicians and, uh, and Ron? I think um, traditionally with um, when something's being composed for Ron, he'll use the um, the artist's music. Like he'll like, uh, like for instance, with Jason Moran, he listened to a lot of his music, you know, online. And then he, he'll pick out music that he likes. I was like, okay, this kind of fits, or I'm, I'm inspired with this music. And then he'll play in the studio with us with that music. And then we will, sh and then we showed it to Jason Moran on Zoom, <laughs> and then he came back with like, "Oh, okay, I see the feeling and that you with the, where the piece is going." And you know, then they'll, the two of them will have conversation about the quality of night and day, and um, then, um, which is actually one of the names of one of the songs that Jason Moran had composed. Did that come, did the did this composition and name of the song come after the dance? Um, he found that title, um, Equinox, from um, one of the pieces when he was listening to um, Jason, Jason Moran and the bandwagon's music. Uh -huh. He liked that idea. And then Jason composed music to fit, like, okay, this is like the feeling that you're going through, that you're, um, f that you guys are working through. And then, um, so then, you know, and then, you know, Ron tweaks it and then he's like, okay, let me try it with, you know, 
let's do it the same movement to the Angela Davis. And then, okay, this needs to go here, or this needs to be in unison when we come to this moment. And I think he just kind of um, plays around with it that way, um, in, an in, or, in, an, in an organic way. Um, the thing that's interesting about the text, um, so Ron printed out the Angela Davis text and then handed it out to all the dancers. We like stood in a circle and everyone just read it. And it just kept repeating, you know, these stanzas all, you know, in the circle. What, for maybe about 10, 15 minutes? Like a yeah, chant. Probably. Almost like a it. chant, right? Yeah. Um, There's like a ritual. Like a mantra. And it was just yeah. like, even though it was finished, started again. And everyone just kept wow. going around the circle so we could, could just resonate with those words. And um, what was interesting was watching the dancers dance to the movement. And he started playing different speeches. It was like, even though these speeches were old, it's so right now. <laughs> it was just like so timely and so um, perfect for what's happening now and the feelings that we're having. And um, I think that's what's really interesting. And I think the mu um, the composition of the music with the text, it just feels like it's supposed to be that way. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty <laughs> you know, amazing. Like uh, again, I was getting chills the whole time. <laughs> It, it, are the speeches layered over the music or do they are they presented independently or both a little bit of both yeah <laughs> i i wonder do you i mean this sort of brings up this piece about communication so there's like all these forms all these different languages are happening at once there's a verbal language there's a dance language there's a musical language there's the visual language of the costumes and the lighting and all of that, it kind of compresses it into this universal quality. And the, it, I mean, again, this is a, another theme of Ron's, it seems to me, there's this universalism. There's like on the one hand, uh, the need to sort of be aware of where you, how you relate to other people. It seems to me to be about love and consciousness. And then this quality about just being a basic human. But do you find that when you're dancing, you're relating to, the the spoken word any differently than the music or that you find your body is sort of picking up on different on different parts of that rhythm versus the percussive element or the vocals or what's being said is moving you emotionally it's very interesting to dance to somebody's words and words that have very like powerful and relevant social meaning do you find that that happens, um, that, that it feels so emotional sometimes, just what's being said? Definitely, definitely. And you pick up on um, different parts of the speech or, you know, I think that there's a way that the music and the speeches are put side by side. They're all like building blocks. Um, but I think that everything is gearing toward the same, like we're all moving towards the same destination. And so along that journey, it's just, what do I pick up? What do, what am I able to use as fuel? What replenishes me when I'm tired? You know, it's just like, sometimes those words are just the only thing that's keeping the machine going or the, or the drive of the music or the piano or like this, this lullaby almost feeling layered with some pretty punctual and, and um, like staccato movement gestures. So I think it all kind of just flows, there's this ebb and flow that happens naturally with the music and the speeches. Do do both of you have a, a, like a, a, a moment in equality, in the equality of a night and day, in that piece that just is, just you kind of wait for it, but that, that's like the part that you really um, just speaks to you and you just love moving through that part. I, I do have a, a couple of those parts, but I won't share. Oh no, we have to wait and we have to, we have to figure it out. <laughs> I love it. Also kind of speaks to that like first glimpse or just the, the use of that language is I think that a missing piece to perhaps the completion, if you will, of this work is really what work is the audience willing to do to, to enter themselves into the world. And I think that more so than any piece of Ron's that I've experienced thus far, it really is calling upon like the world. Like there's absolutely no separation between the dancers on the stage and the people in the audience. It's like everyone holds equal amount of value in the space. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like 
you know, we're coming out and we're performing or whatever, but it's like, these are people. And I think that Angela Davis's speech helps you arrive to watch or, you know, gears your, your eyes and your, your ears into like a very particular place so that hopefully it's different than when you arrived and just said, oh, well, I'm going to watch some dance today. And that you're thinking a little bit more deeply about what it means to be someone who has the opportunity to even sit in a theater and watch. Mm. That's so beautiful. Yeah, that's um, definitely said, Joycey. <laughs> I, you know, and I think the audience is sort of always, I mean, the whole environment, the whole context is kind of part of the show. But I think in dance in particular, you know, the audience is sitting there thinking, you know, they can see that there's a concept being thrown out and they're trying to guess what that might be. So it's kind of nice to have the words and the speech, because I think that that takes people into kind of more of a meditative personal space where they're stop, where they're not trying to kind of guess what you are doing on stage. And I think that is a nice way to kind of pull everybody in with you. Like they're, we're dancing, we'll be dancing kind of with you. Did you have to do a lot of the rehearsing through Zoom? How did that change? How did the rehearsal situation change? Yeah, it was um, once, once, every, once everyone went to quarantine, we connected to Zoom right away. Um, Anique Roberts, who was our rehearsal director, she um, was on Zoom teaching for um, at NYU Tisch. So she kind of taught us, like, you know, we have to do this setting, we have to do this, this is how we're going to play the music. And it was a little bit challenging in, in the beginning. Um, you know, why is everyone doesn't look like they're dancing to the music together? Oh, there's a delay. Oh, the Wi Fi is <laughs> this. Or you're not look like, like is, this, is this my right arm? It looks like it's your left arm. Like, and even right now, you know, we shifted back onto Zoom and, you know, we feel more comfortable about it. We're just like, okay, here we go. And we're teaching one of the dancers uh, movement and it's going really well. But um, the Mellon Foundation gave us a grant to a that gave that gave us the ability to do these bubbles and that was the perfect time for us to come together safely um we were tested many many times um and we had you know strict cleaning codes that we had to abide by in the studio afterwards when we were in the lumber yard we were the only people in the building we never went outside unless one person had to throw out the garbage but we never saw another human being for those oh. three weeks um Kind of a little bit, a little bit the same when we were at Jacob's Pillow as well, and um, but it just made us really value and appreciate us being together in the same room. It's really important to be in a physical space together. Sort of the Zoom thing is relevant to now, which is why I asked the question. It is such a privilege to be able to see the live shows, you know, by turns too, for us to experience. I mean, there is that thing that happens that just doesn't happen in a two dimensional space. I wanna pivot a little bit because I feel like I've completely eaten up our time. One of the things that really interests me in Ron's work is his, his arc, sort of his, what I would call archiving of the um, African movement lexicon, some vocabulary that he's chosen from African movements. It seems like he draws mostly from West Africa. What are those movements? Where do they come from? Yes, yes. So I know um, back in the 90s when I um, joined the company in the late 90s, Ron was going to the Ivory Coast quite a bit mm -hmm. and working with the company there, um, Ballet d'Afrique Noir. So he was going back and forth. That's where he, um, it actually just ties into at the Upside Down. And um, he was creating Upside Down on his company evidence here in Brooklyn and then going to the Ivory Coast to work with the company and working on it with them and then like going back and forth kind of like, okay, I'm gonna teach you guys what I taught what I taught them. Okay, then we all went to the Ivory Coast um, and then um, that's where he completed the piece. And then the both companies um, premiered it at Aaron Davis Hall. And it was like a 45 minute length work with live music. And um, so the way Ron presents it to us, you know, he does let us tell us, okay, this is, um, um, this is a morning dance, or this is sabar, mm -hmm. or this is um, um, this sabar. Is, is that drum, drum, Senegalese drumming and dance? Is that correct, yeah. sabar? It was great because we also learned, you know, the um, sabar from the dancers there, and but the way Ron presents it to us, it's just in the phrase. It's just organically in the phrase with the contemporary dance. And he doesn't really separate it. It's just like 
he'll give us the phrase and it's just in there. Um, I think since 2004, um, Ron started using a lot of Afro-Cuban dance. Mm-hmm. So right now there's a lot of Afro-Cuban in the work. Um, you'll see it in In Mercy a little bit and you'll see it in, um, we call it 10, but it's the equality of night and day. You'll see the difference of, you know, when he was using a lot of the West African sabar and upside down in contrast to the, um, the more recent works. When, when he brings you the movements, does he contextualize their origination, the, like the context in which they're presented? Because, you know, the, the African dances are, are sort of like community dances, right? Social dances. Is that all an intentional part? of when he brings the movements into these particular pieces? Yes, like he'll, um, like for instance, if he says, oh, this is a morning, this is a morning dance. And so he'll, he'll describe to us, this is what the feeling is. And then he'll like, here's a story to go with it so that you can uh-huh. feel what morning really feels like. And, you know, or there's a premonition, there's this walk and he'll explain to us what those different dances are and the feeling he wants it to have in the work that's gonna help tell the story to bring it out it's even more than just kind of historical lineage that connects to that tradition, Um, but it's sort of tried and tested. You know, these are, this is like a movement vocabulary that um, has been sort of cultivating these feelings for for a long time. So the dancers too, that, you know, none, with Ron's work with him using the traditional dance, like none of it is arbitrary. Like there's a reason like, oh, there's this farmer dance because he wants us to- Yes. taking care of the ground and the earth. He wants us to feel that in this moment. Or this is a, this is a warrior dance because he wants us to bring that warrior energy out of ourselves when we do this moment. Um, do you want to elaborate, Joycey? <laughs> um, I think that that really, that, that, that gives a lot, that gives a, a large uh, picture of like how I think the, the movements and ritual makes its way onto what you see um, on the stage. Um, and I guess I would speak to having been a company member that did not have an opportunity to go study in West, West Africa with the company or to go to Cuba. Um, and I think that it's still given to us the same way. I don't think that Ron immediately tries to bombard our minds with a lot of information, but that he really trusts the dancers in the space and our ability to like pick up and sense and feel. And Mm -hmm. once we've had, you know, some trial and error with the steps, you know, he goes back in and gives these stories. And so then it's like, you have Ron, like Ron's spirit, almost like walking with you as you're doing the work, as well as like the backing of the traditional space. And so there's like this energetic support, right? So there's this, like, if you allow the spirit to take you to this place, even if you've never visited or if you've never, had an experience in which you had to think in that way, there's there's a lot of support. Wow. Joycey, that's a really beautiful way to describe that. It's it's really interesting for a viewer who may not understand the reference to those movements, kind of know that there is, um, is this connection to kind of traditional rituals. When you know, hey, this is a farmer dance and we are, you know, this is a stick dance and we're calling upon the fertility of the earth or caring for the earth. Someone's lost a loved one and you're all coming together. It's neat for people to know that that vocabulary has that source. And it's so interesting that Ron has like become the source, you know, that he went to go study that and he kind of brought it back. Do you both do other kinds of dance? Are you musicians? The dance and the music are almost one and the same. Um, When you're a dancer, you're a musician when you're a musician you're a dancer kind of thing do you study the music no i do um you know just uh, taking traditional west african dance classes or sabar um i had the opportunity while i was in undergrad to um, be a student of the dun dun drums and so like learning um traditional malenke rhythms or rhythms from guinea and in ghana even and studying in ghana um just like practicing traditional dance as well as like studying afro-cuban forms but i don't think it's the case for everyone i think that there's like an avenue for everyone to take part regardless of whether it's something you've seen and studied before or if it's your first time and those rhythms they're so intricate some of them and they're a little bit sometimes they're a little bit off and then they can you know off as in like a quarter beat or half measure or something off a little bit and you can kind of sink yourself your teeth into that in a different kind of way so that's that's really intriguing and so earthy 
and joyful. Even when it's morning, there's something very, it's heavy, but it's not heavy because it's, I think it's about a shared experience. You know, that everything is, is very much that community spirit. Is there anything else before I wrap up with my silly final question that you, either of you would like to share about coming to Mondavi Center? Yeah, um, well, before, I'm not sure if we were recording yet, but I'm from California. I'm from the Bay Area. Hey. Uh, my, my parents both immigrated from the Philippines to California, and they both happened to go to Yuba City High School, which is where they met, which is about an hour from UC Davis. And so I'm so excited to share once again. Um, I think it's about six times that we performed there. It's one of my favorite places to perform. Um, and the, um, especially for the community, a couple of years ago, Ron and I went to California and we just decided to um, not just make it a vacation, but to teach. And so we went to Sonoma, we went to Sacramento, we went to um, Oakland and just taught master classes. I wish you could do that now. That would be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> and so we just love sharing with the, you know, California community. We um, one project we did at the Yuba Buena Center for the Arts with the Nick Cave project was we, we auditioned dancers from California and they um, we performed in the Yuba Buena Museum with the Nick Cave um, sound suits on. And mm -hmm. after we did that, um, we had been working these dancers worked so hard and were so beautiful. So we incorporated them in our performance. Wow. Perform in the performance. And so we know there's lots of California dancers out there that um, love to follow Ron. And so we're excited to share with them and see them again. We're so happy to have you home. <laughs> and Joyce gets to come visit. Yes, yeah. it's my first time. So I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to just share this work and, and be amongst this wonderful energy. But so much, so much great energy. I mean, I think everybody's really excited because you all bring such a, such a radiant spirit when you come to Mondavi Center that the halls kind of buzzes a little bit for a few days after you leave. You think we can feel you? Um, and then my final question, just because I have to ask this, what do y'all do when you're done with the show? How do you unwind? What's your, what's your like, woohoo, we finished the show with, you know, is it, is it, is it kava and a frozen pizza? Is it, you know, like, what, what's your, what's your process of just like, it, there's just so much that goes into your performances. It's an emotional, it, it's not just a physical journey. It's a real emotional investment every time. Um, how do you come down off of that for yourself? I mean, I know after the curtain call and you go back into the dressing room, I like to just turn the lights off for a minute because sometimes it's like the lights are too bright. It's like turn everything off and just sit there and just breathe and just meditate for a second to just to bring myself back together. Um, and the thing I look forward to is going back to the hotel, take an Epsom salt bath. <laughs> that I was going to say bath. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. Yes, if possible, I love to shower before I eat just so that I can relax, like have the food and relax. But I think that it really hits me is uh, when I'm like packing up, you know, I'm like rolling back up the heating pad or putting the foam roller back in my bag. Like, wow, we've just really had another opportunity to share the work and just like expressing my gratitude inwardly because it just, you know, I've just come from on stage and it's been a very outward experience. And so like to just kind of, I get really quiet after shows, after the, um, like the talk backs or whatever happens. And I'm just looking forward to some good food and some rest. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I'm I, again, we are so excited to have you. I thank you so much for speaking with me today, taking your time out, rehearsing. And, uh, and geez, we're gonna see you pretty soon here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Peace, stay well, be healthy. <laughs>